Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Welcome to Two Minutes to Think. Hello everyone. Welcome to Two Minutes to Think. My name is Jasmine. Today we are going to discuss about one of the most commonly spoken and trending news, which is WhatsApp privacy policy versus the Indian government. In the recent times, you would have all come across this particular screen on your WhatsApp page, which pushes a notification asking you to update your WhatsApp. So first, why is it so important to talk about this issue today? Over a population of 130 plus crores in India, we have 50 crore people using WhatsApp, active users, I mean to say, and 40 crore people who are actively using Facebook and 20 crore people using Instagram and 1 crore people using Twitter. Having such a huge user base, India as a country, we never had a particular protocol saying that these are the do's and don'ts of using social media. Whereas if you compare it with Europe, they already have a law which has to be abided by the people. So India being a country and having the world's biggest WhatsApp users, the IT segment of India has recently drafted a law which has to be followed by the people. But Facebook as a company and its owner who is Mark Zuckerberg is totally against this law. Why is Facebook against the Indian law? What exactly is the reason? We shall understand about this in a while. But before even going to the video, I would like to make one thing very, very clear here. If you are a person who has completely no idea about the social media versus Indian government, what's happening, what is this ongoing issue, then absolutely this video is for you. Because even I do not want you to get into the complexity of the issue by explaining it with all technical terms. So I'm going to simplify this topic in the best possible way and I'm going to deliver it to you today. All right. We will also see what is the current news about this issue towards the end of this video. So stay tuned till the end of this video guys. So Indian government has come up with few terms and conditions and instructed the privacy policy of the social media, not just WhatsApp, any messaging platform, let it be signal or it could be telegram, any of this messaging platform in future, even if they wanted to do business with India, definitely these laws and regulations has to be followed. First of all, let's see what has happened in the recent times. After releasing this WhatsApp update notification, Facebook's owner Mark Zuckerberg has mentioned few pointers in one of his recent speeches. So let's understand what are all these pointers. There are a lot of uh, pointers which he has mentioned in that context, but I would like to take three important pointers which he has highlighted in that context. The first one being, whatever the conversation you are having, we do not have any access to that conversation because it's an end-to-end -end encryption. What is this end-to-end -end encryption? In a simple way, if we need to understand this, let's assume a courier service. A courier service will be sealed at the source and only the person at the destination can open the package. No one else can open it or tamper it in between. That's exactly the word encryption end-to-end -end means. So this is the first point which was told by Mark Zuckerberg. The second point which he has mentioned was, we would not share your data with any third party agencies or even within the Facebook ecosystem. What is this Facebook ecosystem? It all comes under the same family. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, WhatsApp, all are under the same parent company. We would not share your personal data with anyone. This is the second point which he has mentioned. The third point is, we do not store any personal information of the user in our server is what the confirmation given by Mark Zuckerberg in one of his recent speeches. Now let's see the official terms and conditions of WhatsApp itself. All these data what I'm going to share, I've personally read through the terms and conditions of WhatsApp and I understood it and I'm trying to simplify it and I'm going to share it with you guys. So let's understand the terms and conditions in three different categories. The first category being information you provide. The second category being automatically collected information. And the third category being business information. So let's understand this one by one quickly. What does this say information you provide? That is nothing but your phone number, which is mandatory whenever you are registering in WhatsApp. 
that would be shared with the organization. Second, your name will also be shared. But would your messages also be shared? No, as I told, it's clearly mentioned it's end-to-end -end encryption. So your messages cannot be seen or it won't be shared with the organization. Now, there is an exception. If there is any undelivered message or if you are sharing any kind of media content, it could be an audio, image, video, all these content will be stored in their database for future forwarding purpose. That's what they're saying. So that will be definitely stored as well as it will be shared with the organization. Now, if you're making any payment through WhatsApp payment, the terms and conditions clearly says that your payment transactional details will only be stored, which is required for the transaction to be completed successfully. For example, the account number, the payment method, the shipping details, and these are all the information which would be stored, but none of the confidential information would be stored. This is what is declared under the terms and conditions category one, which is information you provide. The second category says automatically collected information. What does this mean? This is nothing but what time do you access WhatsApp? For how much duration do you access WhatsApp? It also collects the data such as your profile pic, which are all the groups you have been added. What is the group pic as well as the last seen status, your status information, everything would be shared and stored by the organization. And also the log files will be stored. The crash report would be stored. Mobile device name would be stored. The hardware model will be stored. The operating system as well as its version would be stored. Your mobile battery status, the signal strength, who is your mobile network operator, that is the service provider, the time zone which you are in, the IP address of your device. All this information will be shared and it can be seen by the organization. Most critically, the location, the location details. In case you're sharing your location details with anyone, for example, let's say you have shared it with one of the cab drivers. If you are allowing your location to be shared with anyone, of course, WhatsApp server will get to know your exact location. However, if you have never shared your location details, still WhatsApp will be able to trace your location approximately with the help of the phone number area code as well as the IP address of the device. So these are all the conditions which is mentioned under the second category, which is automatically collected data. Now let's see the third category which is business information. In case if you are allowing the WhatsApp access through some third party application, let's assume you have downloaded a receipt from one of the banking application and you are sharing it with WhatsApp contacts. So of course, WhatsApp would share its data with that third party service. May it be a banking application or it could be even some photo editing or video editing softwares where you're providing WhatsApp access to it for sharing those photos. So also it's clearly mentioned any business conversation which happens through a business account with you. WhatsApp can get to know what kind of conversation is happening and they are clearly stated in the terms and conditions that it is solely for the purpose of enhancing the customer experience. And yes, this is also very important to be known in case if you're sharing any particular article, let's say a newspaper content or any particular video content from any website, WhatsApp has all the rights to take your information through that website. Maybe you would have been subscribed to that website or you would have been a registered user. You would have provided all your personal details while registering with that website. Yes, if you are sharing any particular document or any article through WhatsApp of that website, then WhatsApp can definitely take your details through that website itself. In case you wanted to delete WhatsApp at some point in time, just by uninstalling the application, the data would not get removed from the WhatsApp server. It would still be stored until and unless you do an in-app deletion. You have to delete the account through the WhatsApp software. That's when all the data will be removed from the server. Until then, it will still be retained in the server itself. So these are the terms and conditions which I have explained to you in the best possible simple way. Now, what is that Indian government has to do with social media? Of course, you would have all heard that there are so many issues in the recent past which happened against the recent ruling government which was raised through the Twitter forum. People as well as celebrities raising their voices against the current government for the farmers bill protest. So all these are the recent incidents where the central government came to a conclusion. Let us try to frame a particular set of rules which has to be abided by any social media company in case if they want to do business with India. So what are those terms and conditions? Now let's understand the government's side of it. 
The government says there can be a lot of fake news which can spread across the nation, which can create a huge threat among people. So we wanted to stop this at any cost. So that's the reason why we are initiating a protocol. So the first request of government is there has to be few officers appointed by Facebook in India itself who will be called as nodal officers and they will be in charge for any claim, legal claim against Facebook. If there is any cyber related crime against Facebook or WhatsApp or Instagram, then yes, this particular nodal officer will be in charge and they will be accountable for it. There is a validity of 15 days period within which they have to address it and they have to close that particular case. So this is the first request raised by the Indian government. The second request is in case if it is found to be there is a particular fake news which is spreading then WhatsApp should come forward and disclose the origin of that particular message. Who was the source who sent this message at first. So we should be able to trace it back. So this was the second request which is raised by the Indian government. Facebook is not going to get affected by the first request. Definitely they can appoint and designate nodal officers in India itself which is a valid claim. But the second one which is against their business ethics because the Indian government wants to track the data of fake news. Now Facebook clearly declares we cannot provide this option of tracking one particular user. Then there is no point of having this business ethics which says end to end encryption. We cannot share the details of a conversation between one person and the others and we cannot allow the government to have the transparency of who was the originator of that particular message. Now Facebook also says today you, it could be just few messages which you wanted to track which you suspected to be a fake news but you will have a scope of penetrating into a huge customers messages which we would not allow. There would be no point in calling WhatsApp as an end to end encryption. People have the faith on us just because their entire conversation is completely confidential. There are a lot of people who are journalists, who are doctors, who are lawyers, who have the personal conversation between them having the faith on this particular platform. If we disclose that information, then definitely it is against our business ethics is what Facebook says. So in turn, the government says if today you're not agreeing to share this data with us, Maybe tomorrow that could be a huge communal clash between people. They can send anything to anyone. There can be a lot of cyber criminal issues which can be reported. It would be difficult for us to even trace out who is the cause behind this issue. So that's why we want a proper legal policy to be followed. We are following a fair privacy policy across the globe and we will never let any harm to happen through our platform. This is one commitment which is given by Facebook. But we should also keep something in our mind. Few years ago, Facebook was the same company who started leaking the personal data of the users and it was bursted out as a very big issue which is called as Cambridge Analytica scam. You can google it and see. During the US presidential election, the preferences of each user of Facebook was shared with the government so they can easily understand the sensitive points of the people. Based on those news which they got from Facebook, they started manipulating their propaganda and that was one of the major reason for the result of the US presidential election. For example, let's say I'm a person who's against liquor. I would definitely protest against the wine shop. If the government has to attract me, they should announce few schemes which is against the wine shop. So automatically I will get attracted to the government. This was one of the strategy which was followed by the US government. They started filtering the preferences of the Facebook users which was shared by Facebook and they used it for the favor of the election results. So the same thing shouldn't happen in India as well. So this is the complete story of this issue. Now as I told at the beginning of the video, the current update of this issue is Facebook has filed a lawsuit against Indian government itself stating that the Indian policy is totally unconstitutional and undemocratic. People will not have any freedom. They will not be able to use social media as they were using earlier. If they have the transparency to see people's message, then people won't have the liberty to share their views through social media. Now in reply, Indian government is still sticking on to its policies, keeping on asking Facebook, when are you going to agree to all these policies? We have already given you three months of time. So your deadline is going to get over. 
they are constantly pressurizing Facebook but towards the end of this video I would like to ask you this question do you think what Facebook fights for is correct or do you think the government's voice on this privacy regulation is correct which one has to be followed which one has to be imposed let me know in the comment section one recent incident which I would like to share with you all during this ongoing issue the latest update which is floating across the social media is there is a concept of three red tick mark like how if a message is delivered we get double tick there is a concept of triple red tick mark which signifies that the government is tracking that particular conversation so this is one of the latest news which is spreading across social media which is a totally fake news please do not believe it even if someone shares it with you please do not believe these kind of messages now guys let's think about it for a moment the Indian government is drafting a law just to avoid or restrict these kind of fake messages from spreading across the country the weirdest thing is during this ongoing issue itself there is a fake message which keeps on spreading across people my opinion towards this issue is guys if we take a proper responsibility about our own actions because we are the ones who are spreading the fake news someone or the other maybe your relative or maybe your friends so request would be let's check once before we forward a message to our friends and let them know how important is it for them to check before forwarding a message so that's two minutes to think please do share this video with a lot of people let the maximum number of people in our country understand this ongoing issue in depth so see you all in the next video with yet another interesting topic until then take care cheers love you all bye bye